Charlie Gard's parents reveal the last emotional hours spent with son. This is not a victory for anyone. This is one really sad case and I am telling you, after reading it your heart is going to be broken. Days earlier, Charlie passed away. He lost the battle with his illness and he went peacefully while he was lying in a specially chilled cuddle cot, allowing his family to spend more time with him before he was taken to a funeral parlor. The boy who divided politicians and religious is now gone and his family is broken to pieces. Once home, it was lovely to sit and watch him, lying there like any other baby, not surrounded by equipment and machinery, without anything obscuring his lovely face. To just see our Charlie, at home, sleeping in his cot where he should be, said his mother reports Daily Mail. Everything around this boy was very public. The life he lived, the illness he had, it was publicly an issue for the Pope, the President of USA and to every single woman and man on the streets. This happened because of the dilemma we all find almost impossible to face, who should choose when to end a life. The doctors who basically never changed their opinion, won the instincts of parents who strongly believe their child has a chance of a good life. He was 16th to suffer from this disease. Aged three months, he was found to have an incredibly rare genetic condition called mitochondrial depletion syndrome, which gradually starved his vital organs and muscles of energy. After Charlie died their first interview was heartbreaking. I visualized Great Ormond Street as a big fish and Charlie, myself and Chris as tiny little fish, says Connie. It was terribly intimidating and stressful to find ourselves up against such a powerful hospital and one which, in many people's eyes, can do no wrong. It's equally terrifying to realize just how easily the rights of parents can be snatched away. They gave up two weeks ago when evidence from recent MRI muscle scans of Charlie's body was presented which stated, conclusively, he was beyond all help. We simply wanted a few days of tranquility with him, she says. After everything, we didn't think it would be too much to ask, we pushed another bed against his bed and Chris and I lay either side of him, says Connie. We didn't want to sleep because we wanted to savor every moment with him. We cuddled him and told him how much we loved him. We took photos of his hands, feet, fingers, and toes. Every second with him was precious. We never wanted to forget how beautiful he was continues Daily Mail, I held him in my arms. It was amazing to see him without the ventilator. Through sobs, Chris and I marveled at how beautiful our son was. Charlie was still warm as we carried him through our front door, recalls Connie. The moment was very emotional. We had got our last wish to bring him home, but Charlie was no longer alive. The family plans to continue with their life as soon as possible. As they say, the courts and their son's illness drowned them. Chris is likely to return to work as a postman and Connie, a career, plans to put her energies into the Charlie Guard Foundation. Rest in peace little angel.